partner. And it hasn't paid off yet, but we'll see. How much money have I lost? <laughs> <laughs> we're doing great, guys. <laughs> so anyways, we were there in Vegas, um, and it was great for Sony to take us out. We did appreciate that. We got to play with the brand new, of course, Sony A7 III. Right. Ostensibly, we were there for WPPI, yes. but at that show, they announced the A7 III, which, yes. I mean, on a, Sony's usually pretty good. Like the A7R III, not many people saw it coming. This one has been widely leaked for weeks, so we had yes. a pretty good idea what we were expecting. Hey, gentlemen. Yep. We just started now. Oh. oh. We started Welcome. YouTube now, but we were on Facebook We, we started YouTube now. <laughs> So welcome. hey, Facebook guys. Hey, yeah. YouTube. Well, so hi, hi, Facebook people, and welcome YouTube people now that have just joined. Let's do sorry, all that again. Sorry for that really disconcerting <laughs> intro. Well, the Facebookers got some interesting uh, intro stuff. Yeah, and, the, uh, the Facebook version is yeah, the director's and, cut. And this people morning. on YouTube aren't getting really. Good. But hey, here we are. Okay, so anyways, let's do it quickly again. We were in Vegas. Yes, uh, we let's just recap got back quickly. from our Sony trip. Uh, we don't like Vegas. Vegas, but we love Sony. We love our press friends. Yes. Uh, and the A7 III we got to play with. Yes. Very, very nice. Yeah. I mean, we were there for WPPI. We checked out some stuff that was coming out, but we got our hands on the A7 III was really why we were there. It's been leaked like crazy, but uh, there were a few things that were still kind of up in the air. Sure. And we're here to talk to, you know, I mean, answer your questions, I, you know, kind of talk about how the industry placed the A7 III and why mm -hmm. they did it after the other cameras. You know, anything that you want to talk about, any questions you have, we played with it quite a bit. Um, WPPI, what did you think about that? That was our first time at Whippy. You're supposed it's, to call it Whippy. It's a pretty small show, and honestly, Whippy. you have to be a Whippy. wedding photographer Whippy. to get the most out of it. It's so much albums and printing and paper and stuff like I that. Mean, I mean, I would say there's probably some people who just have album fetishes, despite, right. you know, they might not even care about photography, but maybe they're right. really into presentation like, oh, material. This is a nice, glossy binding. That would be surface. sweet. What a sweet show for those peeps. Uh, it was fairly small, um, yeah. but you know, it's nice to walk around it, you know, meet a few people. Um, the standout for me is, as I've mentioned repeatedly, air cushioned monopod with a pedal at the bottom. Yeah, Best yeah. thing ever. I'm going to put a video head on that thing. I'm going to use Yeah, it the day. glide cam. That was interesting. So Steadicam? Steadicam. Steadicam. Steadicam made a sort of Tiffin branded monopod. Carbon fiber, video monopod. Nice and light. Yeah. Spring powered. And yeah, you got to push that puppy. I guess they've got a lighter version, which is like 13 pounds ish. Yep. And then they have the one that we've tried was like 20 pounds ish, 25 pounds spring. So yeah, you can, you can stand over it, hit the pedal, and then it ejects up and hits you in the face. It's beautiful. If you're not expecting it, but what I really loved about it is it's well dampened enough. I could actually see doing a rise in a shot uh, as long as you're pushing down on that, let go. Using you a heavy a camera nice, and yeah, having powerful you muscles. You could get a nice smooth rise up, which would be kind of a fun perspective to have for some shots. Jordan loved it. He was very excited about it. He got to play with his monopod. What else was exciting there? That's it. Let's go to the A7 III. <laughs> <laughs> um, just two things. I've got Drew saying that this is not his fault. Okay. Yeah, okay. Starting oh, yeah, of course. Yes. Drew's yeah. not here today, so none of this is his fault. Uh, <laughs> so I hope you're enjoying We Mexico. always appreciate you... the support of Gary, Ian, and Ron. Isn't that amazing, though? Drew possible. should be enjoying himself in Mexico, yeah, and, and instead he's, he's watching us on a live us, show. Yeah. yeah, just fumble around. Thank um, you, Drew. Okay. And, um, yeah. Who's Zach, he there with? Zach, Does he have a lady with him? I don't know. Um, Zachary <laughs> is saying, um, nice sweater, nerd. Um, Thanks, Zachary. <laughs> hey, Zachary, just so you know, nerds have now taken over the I'm sure the world. you're probably yeah. at home in your well, bathroom well, right now. So. The, Nerd is the nicest the, thing someone can say about nerd. you nowadays. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. So it's, it's very, uh, yeah, we should say it, we had a huge dump of snow. We almost didn't make it in this morning. Oh, man, it's terrible so to I, come back brutal. to this. So I'm wearing my winter sweater. Almost so makes you want to go back to Vegas. Yeah. Almost, not quite. Almost. Yeah. I mean, the desert was beautiful. Yeah. Not, not my scene. Tell us, yeah. tell us about the dune buggy. Uh, we were going to jump in that later. Oh, yeah, but okay. we will talk about our yeah. trip there. We, we yeah. did desert right. things, and we definitely want to touch on this. Now, guys, uh, we have a disclaimer here. <laughs> this is <Yeah>. not <coughs> a review. This is not a review. This is not a review. Uh, it, and it's funny. We're only saying that. I mean, of course, most yeah. of you realize it, but a lot. Yeah, there, thank you. Yeah, this is not a review. We're gonna fla fla hit me again. We're going we're gonna to yeah. flash that. Hit me. <laughs> we're going to yeah. flash that. <laughs> Quite a few times. Uh, no, this is not a review. We are not replacing our traditional YouTube reviews with live show things. This is just, we came back, we want to talk about the camera, answer your questions, but yes, yeah. we're doing a full review of the yeah, A7 III. Yeah, I'm going on ostensibly a vacation to finish the A7 III video, so it should be up pretty quick. But I thought this would be a great stopgap, and especially I'd like to answer some of your questions. Exactly. Um, and just see if that all equates to the stuff that we've talked about in our full review, if we need to pad it, add anything to it. 
Uh, I'm looking forward to your feedback because everyone there was quite excited. I mean, the specs had kind of leaked before, but what sure. we were expecting is more handicapping of this camera. You know, some features to be pulled off to move people up to the R series, uh, even the A7R2, you know, to segment that a little bit more. But basically, we got. A9, A7R3 features with a new sensor, which was also yeah, a big surprise. Yeah, they really didn't do a lot of cost cutting. And, and that's, I think, was so impressive. I mean, it wasn't really a secret that, that I mean, you know, it's not like Sony re released that this was coming out, but I mean, this was the, the well, obvious late. choice. I remember it was like, yeah, what's, what are we going to go well, see? Well, and it was late too. It's an A7 III. In the previous yeah. versions, they've done the A7 at the same time or earlier than the R version. But I yeah. think. I think um, that the D850 kind of made them make an early move and pull the A7R3 out before they might have initially intended I to. think it worked well for their marketing. I mean, you know, yeah, the D850 came out, so like, okay, we need to compete with that directly. A7R3 is ready to go. Um, you know, they released the A9 as well, and you know, a lot of people are like, oh, well, why didn't they do the A7 III first? Mm -hmm. I think from a marketing standpoint, it makes more sense to do it this way. I mean, the fact is uh, you get people buying the A7R 3 which is not a small ticket item. Yep. You get the A9 out first because it's a very specialized niche product. Yep. But the fact is, yeah, what, what blows me a bit away with the A7 III is it's a lot of camera for the money. Right. And had they released this first, you might have had a lot of people maybe say, oh, an A7R 3 might be more my thing, but it's okay. I have an A7 III. I'm going to stick with that for a while, you know? Yep. So here, I think now it's going to be a lot of people want to get in full frame. We're going to buy this and I think a lot of A7R3 users and A9 users will mm -hmm. buy this as a backup cam for I, professional work. I think it'll be really popular for that. The only thing I find interesting is if this was flipped. Is this the only the, thing you find interesting? Okay, in terms of the release cycle. Oh. The um the A7 III would have, if our you know suspicions are correct, been released before Christmas. Um and I do think they kind of you know, they might have lost out. The A7R3s have been very difficult to get your hands on. There's a lot right, of shortages right. of those. That could have cleaned up because I'm, but I also think they saw the 6D Mark II and they were like, oh, I guess we can hang out for a little while. There's nothing we need oh, to rush to market to really. You're so mean. With. It was it's so mean. It, yeah. Let me know in the <laughs> things if you think I'm so mean. Uh, <laughs> you know, um, one of my biggest difficulties with the A7 III is just how you write it when you're trying to tweet it in Instagram. It's a real pain in the butt. Like, do you do A7, A7 and then space, three Roman numeral three? Yeah, okay, that would be the smart way to do it. No, that's not how I did it. <laughs> I did it. No, I did A7 and then three lowercase A7 i's. A7M3. No, but you can't but do it's Mark. Not a mark. See, that's the thing. Mark is, mark is, is such a ca canon thing, right? Yeah. You know, and, and we do that. We walk around saying like, oh, it's the Let A7. Let us know in the comments. It's the A7 Mark III, and then it doesn't make sense. It's not, and Sony hates it. They're like, mm. we don't like people named Mark. A's. Yeah. Everyone's Except Mark Weir. A7 He's amazing. I I I. Um, I, 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 right? Yeah. yeah, A7, I, I. And you can't do A7, L, 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 because then anybody searching for the common tags isn't going to find your thread. So it's, it's, it's really difficult. Anyways, I, I couldn't sleep because of this. Okay. <laughs> So, uh, going into the show, we heard 24 megapixel sensor. I kind of suspected that we might be seeing the A9 sensor brought down. Yeah, you that foolish lower, child. You thought they'd put that 20 megapixel which sensor. Which I thought there. would completely change, especially the wedding industry, if they were to do that. But, I mean, what we were hearing over and over is a huge part of the price of the A9 oh, is yeah. making a is sensor, the, that, the sensor yeah. that can read out that. I was fast. just going to say, yeah, yeah, when you, you know, that'd be a wonderful dream. But then when you think about. Um, yeah, cost and stuff. There's no way they could do it. And as a side note, uh, it, we should say, and again, people might ask this as well, the a7 III does have rolling shutter issues when yes. you're shooting silent mode stills. So unfortunately, no, you're not going to get that, that fast scanning 20 megapixel sensor. And you're not getting an improvement in rolling shutter with this new sensor either. But it is a brand new sensor. Yeah. The sensor itself, it does it have an AA pass? It does yeah, have it does aliasing have filters filter. in it. Yeah, and and you and see what, that up close. Like it's not going to have the resolution that that uh, an A7R3 is going to have. Obviously, I mean, yeah, because know. of the pixels on it. Yeah. But you know, you might even theoretically get a sharper image out of those new, you know, camera new cameras. Something like a D7200 with a 24 megapixel. Film. Sure, APS-C. You're right. Yeah. APS-C will have an advantage in resolution over this camera if you're keeping the ISOs fairly low. Yeah, yeah, uh, shooting in good light. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But 
you know, that's to be expected. 24 megapixel full frames, it's tough to put a, a, a sensor array without an aliasing filter and avoid those are more pretty, array. Those are pretty far apart, those pixels. Yeah, you need more res. Yeah, exactly. The other thing that's worth mentioning too, we said it has rolling shutter, but the rolling shutter is significantly better than what we're seeing with the high res cameras right now. The A7R three, sure. the D850, it is much better controlled, which means the electronic shooting, I would not use it for action. I would not use it for anything where you're panning frequently, like birds in flight, but it would still be very usable. Again, for oh, like, sure. I would be comfortable using it for a wedding where I would absolutely say the R3 and the 850, I would never use those for capturing important jobs. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think actually the rolling shutter is fairly well controlled for video work. Very uh, well. You know, that was a positive thing. But yeah, I would still hesitate to use the silent shooting mode. I, I mean, to me, it was almost uh, akin to... I don't know, kind of what you get out of a D850 or something like that. It just, you know, it's there. You might have a situation to use it, but it's not as useful as like the A9 where there's very little reason there's to pull it no out penalty. of silent shutter. Yeah. Let's answer a couple questions here. Well, whatever Ron has, it's, shout it out. It's much better than the D850 rolling uh, shutter. A little bit. Yeah, much it, better. Does little it bit. have any kind of built-in time lapse? No, so Play Memories yeah. is still missing. We have asked why this is. Uh, it came along with the restructuring of the menus, apparently. I, I find it incredibly frustrating, not only for the time-lapse functionality, but well, several other apps that were really cool. They, mm -hmm. um, they've, they've still got their built-in app store, right? Like no, the, the app store's gone. Oh, really? Uh, oh, yeah, okay. so, it's kind of uh, funky, yeah. So people are using aftermarket gear. That works fine. You have to plug it into the USB port to trigger yeah. it. Uh, yeah, it does work fine, but I hate dragging extra gear around. How often am I out shooting? And I'm just like, oh, I can just throw the camera here on this seal while I'm having lunch and get a quick time lapse and stuff. Yeah. You're going out with the intention of creating time lapses with this because it's most of those controllers are pretty bulky. They're pretty inconvenient. Oh yeah, they're the butt. Yeah. And it just seems like it's such an easy thing to code into software. It boggles my mind that they don't just do it. It's I don't. It's get crazy it. that um, you know we harped and harped on Canon forever about their lack of built-in intervalometer functionality. But they are more advanced than Sony in that regard at this point, which is surprising. That's all it takes. You just have to say there that, and go. then Sony's like, oh, we can't have that. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Fix it, Sony. Firmware updates. It's software. It is, by the way, the exact same menu system almost to the to the letter as the A9 and A7R3 yeah, menu. Yeah, which is a, a better design menu. Yeah. I love that there's my menu options in there. Yeah. How is the low light on the sensor itself? Is it everything that you know people are kind of making it out to be? Or it's compared to an A7 II, it's it's, a big it's better. Yeah, yeah, for sure, it's it's better. Yeah, uh, and I would say it's even a hair better than the A9. Um, again, because they've optimized the A9 sensor for fast yeah. readout over everything else. Um, you know, it's very comparable to like I would say it's. D750, it's better than a D750, yeah, better than the D750, which has been kind of our gold standard for 24 megapixel sensors. But, I, you know, and it's good. And, and dynamic range is improved, you know. Um, I was really excited to see that. That would be the one drawback if they use the A9 sensor. This has significantly more dynamic significantly range. Significantly more dynamic range. So, you know, I mean, is it going to blow a D750 out of the water? No. And that's good because that's a testament to the 750 being such an old camera and still Just delivering a great, great well results. option. But it is better than a D750. So you're going to get comparable or better performance for sure. Yeah. How good is the weather sealer? It's going to be the same as an A9 and an A7R3. Right. And so, again, from what we've seen... From uh, what Imaging Resources has seen. Yeah, from what Imaging Resources has seen and the sort of the, the word on the street, the Sonys are well sealed, yeah. but uh, the base isn't so good. Around the battery door can be an issue. So you don't want them sitting in standing water. You don't want them getting heavy, heavy rain on them for a long yeah. period of time. But, uh, I mean, we got them dusty and dirty, and they were fine there. And we are really pushing the manufacturers. Chris and I have a dream of doing a mirrorless weather sealing test. Because we all, the SLRs have been beaten to hell for decades. Yeah. We have a pretty good idea what they can take. Mirrorless is a little bit more unknown, so we're fighting to make that happen. Yeah. We'll see if it actually does. We're going to use Jordan's GH5, not mine. Um, <laughs> 4K full frame. Dude, it's 20, your show. <laughs> 24 frames a second versus 25 uh, to 30 frames per second. Yes. 1.2 crop. Any comment? Uh, so there is a crop in 30. There is not in 25. Um, we talked to yeah. Sony. We're hearing some mixed information on that. Um, so PAL users, you're getting off scot-free. Well done. Yeah. Good choice. RC NTSC users, you're going to be happy. Yes. Uh, but yeah. Like us. <laughs> yeah. 
But yeah. uh, if you are shooting 30p, there is slight a crop. slight crop and there is a noise penalty as well when you're using that. Didn't really see it too much cranking it up, but in log I saw that there was noisier yeah. shadows when we were shooting in the 30 frame per second. I guess if you're going to choose a, a frame rate where you aren't going to get the crop, 24 is the better choice to have anyways. But still, it's a little funky. Fun fact, um, I love 24 frames per second. Do you, Chris, know why we switched over to 24 frames per second as our exclusive frame rate on the Because we TV? used to do 30 for quite a while. We did. Um, because it's easier on your computer? No, because the A6300 became our B cam, which had the exact same issue. Oh, yeah, that's uh, right. So that's why we switched to 24 frames per second. And the, then we stopped the using The 24 that. legacy lives on now. Yep. Yeah. History. More you know. Now we do 24 because... It's, I, I, uh, it's it's Jordan's quiet, seething protest against 60p popularity footage today. He's like, damn it, I'm gonna, I'm not only am I not going to do 60p, I'm going to get as far away from 60p as possible. We're going to roll it back to 18 frames per yeah, second like a Chaplin gonna film eventually. It's going to be Keystone Cops here pretty quick. <laughs> okay, so the A7R3 has a bit the ability to shoot in crop mode. Yes. Does the A7 III share that ability? Absolutely. Yeah. Sweet. Very impressive, actually. And and unlike the other cameras, the uh, the A7 has uh, there's differences in image quality, but it's fairly minimal. Hey, I mean, you, you could fairly easily interchange back and forth between crop and full frame without yeah. much penalty. I was really surprised. Yeah. Unless you're shooting very high ISO, or you really need to squeeze every bit of dynamic range out of that sensor, you can use the two interchangeably, which yeah. is my favorite feature of the A9. But that camera was as we know, handicapped a little bit and in terms of picture yeah. profiles. Uh, where something like this, yeah, it's great. I had two focal lengths all the time. Yeah. Unfortunately, we decided that I would do my Super 35 test in a helicopter when I really could have used some wide angle there. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's definitely an option, and it's great that they built that in. It also means if you're a video shooter and you've got a bag of Super 35 lenses, this is still going to be a completely no usable camera, no compromise. And really, I mean, right off the bat, we should say the biggest surprise that we found on this camera, and, and Jordan was pleasantly surprised, we expected of all things that they're gonna do to cut costs, because this is an entry-level camera, of all the things that they're gonna choose to cut costs, we thought for sure, like many other manufacturers, they are gonna handicap the video, they're yep. gonna take something out of it, we're not gonna have S-Log, or we're gonna have poor crop quality, or something yep. like that. And uh, they didn't, they gave us 6K over sampling and beautiful quality, mm -hmm. S-logs are all in there. Yep. Um, image and stabilization, HLG. HLG, like, you're like, wow, they really didn't leave anything out of this camera. The other thing that really surprised me, going back to more a stills related thing, is they kept the focus point joystick on it. This is the first entry level full frame camera with a joystick on it, and it makes a huge difference. Having that combined with the touch screen means, I mean, you've got a ton of 693 autofocus yeah. phase detect points, makes it easy to navigate that. Well, and there's I another, use the yeah. joystick for fine adjustments, and then the touch screen when I need to quickly move it dramatically yeah. from one point to another. And in photography, again, we love that about the A9. Having thumb joystick having the touch control again you can set it up so that it works with your thumb while you've got your eye up to the viewfinder it's the same system as the a9 and from what we could see it has the same excellent hit rate so again another thing where we thought they were going to cut costs yeah. they just said no nah, i mean we've already got this array working from the a9 let's jam it into the a7 III uh so this camera shoots 10 frames per second and focuses brilliantly the face detect works well. The eye autofocus is fast AF. Yeah. So yeah, AF, fast AF. Fast AF. A lot of people were using adapters there too, and we were hearing consistently that if you were using an adapter, it's as good as the A9 or A7 III. Yeah. So or A7 R3. Said other companies' optics. Correct. Yes. Okay. Yep. Yeah, Nikon is. <laughs> you totally just answered another question. Perfect. So, perfect. Um, um, can we can we bitch about the Sigmas for a second hold, here? Hold that thought. Hold okay. that thought. But we don't know for sure uh, if that's a problem yet. This, yeah. this question keeps on popping up quite a bit. Okay. 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 Uh, I know this is not a review. So Why is Chris is wearing all black? Of, because no, his no, spirit this died. This is yeah. There, there's that too, but the internet already knows that. Um, <laughs> this versus the X-H1, mm -hmm. how do you feel? Right now, tentatively. I mean, they both have their respective strengths. Um, I would still say if you're looking to put together an affordable lens lineup, then the Fuji is gonna be a better option for that. Um, that being said, you know, the image quality is, is better for stills on the a7 III. Uh, the video functionality is excellent on it. But the X-H1 has, I would say, feeling it. I would say it's better build quality on it. 
I would, I would probably agree with that, yeah. I would say that the, um, well, certainly the viewfinder is my one, and we're going to see this in the full review quite a bit. It is something that I wrestled with a little bit, which was not the case with the X-H1. No, I mean, the X-H1 has been a thing, and this, this does bring up a good point we want to talk about. I mean, to me, this is like the A6000 of full-frame full frame. Sony cameras, insofar as it's excellent, it's feature-rich, and it's amazing value for the money. And it really does start to beg comparisons. Like this camera competes against GH5s to some degree at cost price. It competes against D750s almost exactly. Yeah. Uh, it beats the crap out of 60 Mark IIs. Um, you know, and yeah, you look at cameras like the X-H1. I mean, we're all in the same price point. I would never want to say that full frame is a be-all end-all. Again, if anybody's paid attention, I actually honestly usually like the smaller sensors better, but this right. is going to be appealing for a lot of people who are saying, I'm ready to spend two grand. Oh, I could have full frame and yeah. do this? The X-H1 is better built, and it's a big body. It's chunky body. Fuji's basically aiming that at professionals straight out. Yeah. And Sony, on the other hand, what they're doing is they're sticking to one body design. They're like A9, A7R3, A7 III, all share the exact same body, basically. Yeah. Um, you can even see the parts where they just left out the PC sync, but otherwise it's, it's the exact empty, same. dead camera. space. Yeah. It's weird, you know. But but I think the bodies are are maybe they're not as professional feeling or looking, but they're professional enough, and they're they work well enough, and the control scheme is great. I like the controls. I like the custom buttons. So although it's not exciting and a new purpose built body, it is very functional. A uh, quick personal question for Jordan. Oh, um, what was your first? I have camera? been married for. Shush. So. What was, it, what was your first camera? Javier was the first love of his life, but first video camera. No, still first camera. Just answer it. Ooh. Both. Uh, I don't think you've ever actually used a camera to take a picture. No, it was a Rebel XT. Yeah. All right. There, there you go. go. For there stills, go. yes, Rebel uh, XT. Go. Yes, he's a Canon lover. Yeah. So you, you just you just made Kayvon pretty happy. Well, there you go. Uh, that's well, all that's I want. We want. That's for you, Kayvon. Yeah. If he's happy, we're happy. Or Kavon, sorry, uh, I don't know. Um, Ron, don't sabotage me. What are you talking about? Uh, <laughs> Mr. Stallman. Uh, oh, hi, Mr. Oh, Stallman. Like would like to know, what drawbacks does it have when shooting video? So the record limit. It does have the record limit, which is shared by all of the Sonys. It's still 8-bit. Um, yeah, 420. Yeah, uh, and I'm playing with some of the log footage. I mean, S-Log 2, I'm pretty comfortable working with. 3 is... Should not be used. In are we getting colors? Are we getting 10 bit out of the HDMI? Or no, is it still 8 bit 422. Still 8 bit 422. Yeah. Um, the biggest drawback for me was the viewfinder. Um, I yeah. found with the A7R3, with all of these new 3.6 million dot viewfinders, I can pull focus without punching in. Yeah. I was constantly punching in with this camera, and also the punch in magnifier is extremely soft on this. Um, it's not extremely I, soft. It's, it's pretty. All right. It's pretty it's good. All right. for, no, no, no. It's dramatically better when you're capturing stills. It's much, much worse when you're shooting so video. So here's the thing. Yeah. If you're shooting stills, it's punching in on a 24 megapixel image for you to check. If you're shooting video, it's punching in on a 4K, where some of the other cameras like the GH5, the Olympus EM1 2 they don't have that same limitation. That's totally accurate. However, I did shoot Jordan's video section, and I manually focused those sections. And yeah, the punching isn't great, but it's not terrible. I mean, it's not soft. We AF. Have, I, ha uh, I haven't confirmed that those yeah. shots were in focus <laughs> as well. So I, got them, I got them in focus. Yeah. You know, it wasn't bad to use, but no, I mean, that is a, that is detriment. And we are living in an era now where we've got G9s with their amazing EVF. Yeah. We've got XH1s with their amazing EVF. We've got Leica SLs with their amazing EVF. Um, you know, and the Even A9. Leica like SL. I know. Well, that's the only good thing about that camera. And, uh, oops. Whoa. You made some friends today. <gasps> uh, every single time. Sorry, Leica. Yeah. And, um... It won't blow away in a hurricane. Um, so anyways, the EVI and the A9. The you, A9 you has just, a, just really wanted to dump on the dump SL. On the you SL. didn't actually have yeah. a point you were yeah. trying to make. Yeah, SL stands for... So, but anyways, um, and of course the A9s have an amazing screen, amazing EVF, right? That was one of the nice improvements. This has the EVF and screen from the A7R2. Yeah. But again, a lot of people have that camera and, and, and the EVF's not bad. Yeah, I mean, that's what you're using right now, Tyler. So you might be able to get by yeah. with it. I would say... If and as cost cutting goes, that makes sense. I mean, they got to cut something to make this fit in the price. Just point. grab a small HD focus. That'll make a huge difference. Almost all the video guys who were using that camera were using that when yeah. we were on our press trip. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that's an excellent option for sure. But as like a 
secondary camera or even as an upgrade to an a7r2 it's dramatically better in low light yeah. i was shocked how good this camera is in low light the only other thing i'd say about the video and again this is already known fact with all the other sony's their hlg mode doesn't maybe have the dynamic range that some of the other companies hlg modes have it's more um, a convenience factor to get out to their really nice tvs that support hdr video yeah you, so you really need to stretch hlg um so it might look okay if you put it on your screen but if you're going to use it as your primary thing I would still use S-Log yeah. 2 probably. Yeah, and you got all the S-Logs on there. Where with Panasonic, we've been using HLG and grading the hell out of it because it's 10-bit, you can get away with it. Yeah. Um, we, we said Kvon's... Uh, oh, no 4K60 uh, either. No correctly. 4K60. Yeah, yeah. No 4K60. <coughs> no 4K60. <laughs> Looking forward to doing your podcast next week, Tyler. All right. The Stallman podcast is good. You've mm -hmm. been on it. I've been on it. I like that. Um... Does it represent the best value for a 24 megapixel camera for professional use? Yes. Yeah, hey, I guess it does. There you go. I mean, I, I feel like this camera is going to be the uh, next D750. Can you, can, you please, yeah. can you please flash? This is not a review. Yeah. Yeah. Just Thank you. This, 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 this is, is not a review. review. Yeah. Yeah, there you go. Review. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, Anybody tuning in now, this is not a review. We're just talking about the 873. Now, how is the the 1080p quality in comparison to the GH5? Did we try it? Uh, I did, yeah. I shot some 24, some 60, and some 1080. Not too extensively. Mm. Uh, I do really find most people, if they're shooting standard frame rates, they'll shoot 4K and super sample it. Yep. Um, the 60 and the 120 are very nice, kind of in line with what we saw with the R3, but better in low light, right. which is really which key is nice. 20. Yeah. yeah, No crop in the 120 anymore. Um, at the 24, I would still say nobody touches Panasonic for 1080 output. That's really one of their main strong suits. It's good. It's certainly better than what we saw in like the A6000 series. Yeah, Much better sure. than the A7 II, which was kind of riddled with more aliasing issues. But... Um, yeah, usable but not exceptional to the and same level. And with touch focusing and and, and uh, face detect and everything, I mean, yeah, yeah I mean, this the, camera is going to be quite an appealing overall video camera. I did shoot a section of it with the autofocus, and yeah. it did a great job. I still think the Canon interface is worlds better. Sure. Having the little tracking box and everything like that is really useful, but did a nice job unless you happen to walk by a brightly lit portrait of someone's face while you're in face detect. Camera might get a little confused. It might in get that a little moment, confused. Yes, exactly. Uh, which I would expect. I was confused. Why I mean, wouldn't the camera be? <laughs> A7R3 for video or this for video? I would I would probably take this for video because you could have two of them almost for the price of an A7R3. The only drawback would be that viewfinder, but I'd get a little small HD monitor and boom, you're rolling. There you go. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Is the high frame rate 120 frames per second mode on the crop on the A7 Mark III? Uh, and how good... How good is it if it is there? Uh, it's actually quite... I didn't notice a quality difference in 120 between Super 35 and 4K, mm. uh, which is great. Mm -hmm. um, and it uses the whichever crop you've selected. There's no additional crop with 120 frame recording. So all you slow-mo guys will love it. I would still say the GH5, GH5S have the strongest 120 frame right. per second mode, but it's certainly close. Um, you know, throw some sharpening on there. Don't wear stripy shirts. You'll get by. <laughs> hmm. Uh, did you notice a light banding issue suggested by DP Review? Oh uh, yeah, and the others found on other mirrorless cameras when used with lenses with light source directly facing it. Yeah. What, so what does Sony say about it? If anyone? yeah, and so and and really more importantly, what does DP Review say about it? I mean, the nice thing about going to these events is we get to talk to the guys. Rishi's there. I mean, he knows everything. So yeah, he seemed slightly tense. This <laughs> yeah, because it's it kind of got blown out of well, it didn't kind of it totally got blown out of proportion. I mean, here's the thing. Um, it's not a banding issue, uh, as we understand it. It's not, it's not a problem with the sensor inherent with banding. And this is the issue that we're seeing is something that will happen on pretty much any sensor array that has a hybrid contrast slash phase detect system. Yeah. You're actually getting reflections from those bright lights coming into the camera off of the phase detect array. Yeah. So you're not seeing banding. You're actually seeing the phase detect array reflecting. And I guess there's not much you can really do about that. No, it's more noticeable on this because yeah. it's so many phase detect pixels yes. crammed into that sensor but the a9 was certainly susceptible for this as well the amount that you'll see it is going to be incredibly rare 
Um, but yeah, you should be aware if you have a camera with these pixels and you shoot backlit, it's going to be an issue you'll run into. Um, yeah. So not specific to this camera model. Um, certainly we didn't see anything as extreme as the one heavily backlit shot that DP no. Review posted. And again, to be fair, DP Review has seen this many times before. They know what to look for. They know how to make it happen. So, but, but yeah, it's there. But, and you know, if you're a pixel peeper, you're, you might hate it. And but. if you're, let's say you're a wedding photographer who shoots a ton of backlit images, there's certainly a lot of people who like to do this. Yeah. This may be an issue. So you should factor that in when you're looking at this camera. Yeah, but again, any camera with a phase detect slash uh, contrast detect system can have this. So just GH5s for everyone. Yeah, there you, you know. go. <laughs> you get a GH5. You get a GH5. Um, let's see. You don't get a GH5. People in the yet. comments section are going to take that literally, yeah. Ron. Hmm? Yeah, they can go out and buy themselves a GH5. <laughs> you get a GH5. Uh... I expect in the 30p in Super 35 is without additional crop. Yeah, no additional crop yeah. if you're in Super 35 mode. Yeah. Sorry, I should have mentioned that earlier. Yeah, just for, just full frame. Yep. Uh, would you wait for the A7S Mark III if it was your if your primary focus is? <coughs> if, yeah. If you're looking for an A cam, I would say absolutely. What we were hearing a lot of people saying is this is their perfect B cam. Like if sure. you have an FS5, FS7, buy this camera right now. If you have an A7R3 that you're using as a primary, this is a killer B cam and might even supplant the R3 as your primary camera. Yeah, and vloggers might dig this, although again, one, one thing just to mention, unfortunately we are still stuck with that screen that rotates vertically but will not come out, so that sucks. Yeah, you don't have a tilt screen where you can see yourself. But yeah, you know, amateur filmmakers, vloggers and stuff, they might still really dig this camera. Yep. We don't know, of course, what the a 7 III is gonna have. I'm really hoping for a 10-bit video source. I don't know that's going to happen. I'm skeptical. I think they'll yeah. do 4K60 and I think it's going to be a low light monster, but I don't know outside of that. Because yeah. this camera is very, I think the S2 is almost redundant at this point. This camera is so good in low light. And maybe yeah. if you're pushing it past like 25,600, you'll see a difference, but holy crap are the files, especially in full frame, good with this yeah. camera. Uh, but I mean, I think I think it's hard to answer that question, of course, because we have no idea what the A7S III is going to be like. But I think Sony is on a push right now to really dominate the market. So I expect big things from it. Hopefully we're not disappointed. Yeah. You know, it's funny. You listen to Sony in these press releases, you listen to other companies. Sony just have this quiet confidence right now, which is a little eerie. Um, they're very calm about it. They're just like, yeah, we're just going to kill everybody you yeah. know and you kind of believe them well, that's you know? uh that's figuratively by the way so. yeah 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 yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know whereas you know other companies like we're gonna kill everybody this is gonna be a great year you know sony's like we're gonna kill everybody this is gonna be our year okay. <laughs> um, well, i will be can. i will be at nab when we're expecting the um, a7s3 launch so you can look forward to that maybe i'll do a little something from the show floor for y'all Y'all. Uh, I've been talking to Tony too much. Yeah, Tony, y'all. Yeah, yep. uh, someone made the comment, uh, you at 24 frames a second versus Tony at... Tw uh, 60, 60 frames per second? second. Oh, 24 will look way better. Fight, yeah. fight by the bike racks, yeah. question mark. Yeah, yeah. 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 Um, you know, uh, Tony will be more eloquent at 60 than I will be at 24, but... Yep. You know, all it's going to be, if, if that actually happens, Tony's just going to speed ramp everything. At, at 24 frames a second, you'll look darn good inside a theater. So. Yeah. Well, and if yeah. I'm moving quick, I'll be blurry. He won't yeah. be able to get me. Yeah, I'll have a nice sharp image of Tony, yeah. so I can just mm -hmm. tap, tap. Yeah. I have no uh, intention of physically fighting Tony North. You're going you're gonna to be, <laughs> you're gonna be like the old school porn theater. You oh, know, wow. on the strip, and Tony's Jesus. gonna be like the the 4K DLP projection uh, <laughs> Cineplex. We'll see which uh, one wins. All right, uh, Jesus. <sighs> so we're doing great how, today, guys. How, uh, how are the skin tones in the R3? Or sorry, the 73s uh, sensor. Yeah. Are they as good as the R3s or are they kind of like the older same, sensor? Same color profile yeah. as the R3 and the A9, which is an improvement for yeah. sure. You still, still see a little bit of magenta cast? Sony with tint. I don't get it. I think it's largely the imports yeah. because we don't have Capture One support for this yet, which is the only program I've found deals with tint with Sony's appropriately. Yeah. I always find magenta cast or green cast, especially in the mid-tones where it's most important. It's like, boy, my highlights look great, but my mid-tones are all magenta -y tinty. Yeah. Um, so it's better, but it's still, I would not put it at the top of I the in-camera processing. You know, I was looking at the files. And hey, let's look at some files. Yeah, I was looking at the files. Yeah, and and again, I mean, some of these have been corrected a little bit, obviously. Um, 
I found the white balance in many different kinds of lighting actually very accurate. I had a really hard time in any way uh, needing to go warmer or colder unless it was for artistic intent. Yeah. So, but everything had like a weird tint. So I'd look at it and yeah. be like, oh, the white balance is off. Yeah. But then the white balance isn't off. It's the tint that's off. Yeah, yeah you can see in the clouds. Like, uh, no, even in her skin tones, I would say mid-tones. Tiny bit of uh, green tint. Greeny tone, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, exactly. Uh, let's cycle through to something else with, oh, the Nomad Cocktail Book. The Nomad Cocktail Book. Yeah. Uh, so it was fun. We got off the strip by a block, yeah. which is the world's most depressing place in the world. Um, oh, these oh are, by the way, does anybody even care about photography anymore? Vegas. I mean, does anyone even care about photography? Huh? I want to yeah, know. A lot of do people, people care about do. photography? Yeah, or is so, just video now? So this was no. all terrifying. Um, we're going to keep moving through there. Uh, just, I just want to find some skin tones. Just, just I don't know if we have skin while, tones while in the, in the outdoors. While you're searching for pictures, a lot of these are nice. Great. Oh, that's a good shot. Good, good job, Chris. Wow, thanks, Ron. Yeah, you're welcome. Um, so, oh, it's uh, black and white. We can't now, I did a lot of black and white because, honestly, the tint was effed. Yeah. Here you can uh, see here, so this one, I I mean, this artificial fluorescent light, um, we're not really going to skin tones, but yeah, if you look carefully, there is still a magenta tone, not just because of the hamachi uh, sashimi cut all over the place, but you do get, again, this kind of pinky tone to everything. Yeah, yeah one way or the other. That's actually the last image there, Chris. Yeah, well, you went through those so fast. Well, I'll go I'll go through slowly as through the rest of the show. How is, about that? Okay, that sounds good. Is Watch our full review. Any... Uh, any difference in the color signs uh, amongst the three new cameras? They look pretty close. So yeah. I would say other than sensor differences, minor stuff. Yeah, yeah, in terms of color, contrast, saturation, the in-camera stuff looks very, very similar. That was an excellent cocktail. That was. Uh, it was called the um, Only You Can Prevent Forest Fires, where they smoked pine. Yeah, in this, they, uh, they, nice set, they set forests on fire in your drink. Yep. But it was nice, yeah. It was very nice. Uh, these, I believe this was at 12,800 ISO. I mean, we should also mention, like, they, they've boosted the ISO performance on this camera. We do have a high one. It yep. was uh, 12,800, 12, yeah. Um, I mean, there's color noise, but the, the software cleans it up nice. And this is using Sony's Image Edge software because so far that's the only software that can uh, that can edit the RAWs. And, and we were having seeing some potential hiccups with that, so we are waiting <coughs> for that Capture One support that should be out very shortly yeah. um, before publishing our full review. Yeah, uh, we really want to muck around with those RAW files with something we're comfortable with. Walking around Vegas uh, just off the strip is is interesting, especially with thousands of dollars worth of camera gear. We had some very interesting uh, uh, conversations with. Random strangers. Interesting. Jordan. Yeah. Jordan was not. I was terrified. Yeah, he was scared. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, there were two of us. That was. <laughs> Which is surprising because you 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 look really tough and intimidating in person. That's what that's yeah. what his mom says. Uh, <laughs> Hi, mom. Hi, no, mom. we did not get our haircut for nine dollars. <laughs> Should have. Um. Let's see. Yes, we asked ro about rolling shutter. Um, Oh, uh, the Sony trade deal is still going on. No, you cannot use it towards the 7.3. No, unfortunately. No, unfortunately. No. Uh, I mean, who knows? They might incorporate that, but I don't think. It's an entry-level price point on this camera. Stay tuned till the end of March, yeah. I guess. What are we looking at? 20... Uh, 26? 26. 26 Canadian, yeah. Yeah. yeah, so right in line with, again, like a 62. Hair more than a D850 right now. D750 is D750. what I say. Uh, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Thanks, man. So You're welcome. Same. Yeah, I feel, you know, the D750 is an amazing camera, but now that this camera's out, I mean, yeah, I don't know. It's, it's tough to, yeah, warrant it. Except that if you've got a sea of Nikon glass adapter support, still isn't there. But, I mean, Canon shooters. But if you're like, if you're coming from an APS-C Nikon or Canon, you're like, I'm ready to go full frame. I'm going to do it. Oh, man. I would I, take, I would take have the to take A7 over the 5D4 at this point. Yeah, uh, which over is, the 5D4. Which is an extra $2,000 Canadian. What does a 5D4 this does? And again, remember, you're getting the Z-type battery. The battery life is excellent now. Um, so yeah, what does a 5D4 do that this can't do? Uh, Juxtaposition. So, <laughs> wow. Uh, I like when you just shout one word, single words at our audience. I think that's yeah. pretty much it for street photography. Just yell out juxtaposition Wait. over yeah. and over. That's the key in Vegas. Yeah. So uh, we mentioned dune bugging, bugging, dune bugging, dune, dune bugging, bugging. Uh, so the image stabilizer in this seems very similar to the A7R3. It's a different system. 
Um, so your stills aren't going to be quite as stable as what we saw in the A7R 3 They're saying five stops as opposed to five and a half stops. Yeah, it's actually a slightly less effective stabilizer. But yeah. what I found really interesting is this uses the same kind of algorithm. The Sony stabilized cameras, especially the R2, S2, I found would do this thing where it would kind of float and then shutter over to the next position. Right. Stable, shutter over. This has a much smoother, kind of a glidier, maybe a bit less effective if I'm just trying to maintain a static frame, but it works much better if you're moving movement. with the camera. Well, you know, we beat the hell of it. I mean, that dune buggy was rough riding. And, uh, my back uh, is still a little yeah. shot because I was leaning forward filming Chris sideways like this. Not good when you're bouncing over no, it hard was rough. rocks. So we'll, we'll have examples of that on our actual review because what is this, guys? What is it, everybody? This is not a review. Oh, okay. yeah. Yeah. yeah, this is not this is not a review. Love it. Good job, guys. Any other questions there, Ron? Is the low light autofocus better than the A7S Mark II or the D850? I want to say it was minus three EV. Yeah, I believe so. Um, yeah, and it was Pretty quite. Comparable. I found it quite reliable. Yeah. Um, you know, again, video autofocus can be fooled, especially at 24 frames per yes. second. I think it drifts more to a contrast-based system because it is hybrid when the lights get really low, and that's when I would start to see some of that classic, you know, the Panasonic shutters uh, yeah. when we were doing that. Uh, again, I don't do a ton of autofocus. This would be a great point place to point out. Uh, the things I don't like to do are video autofocus tests and overheating tests. Right. There is a lovely gentleman <laughs> in America by the name of Max Yuryev, and uh, he did an overheat test with this camera, yeah. was able to, while super sampling in 4K, shoot an hour and a half with, with the stabilizer on, shoot an hour and a half, and no he didn't problems. even see the temperature warning come on. Um, yeah. So overheating so probably won't be an issue. Shouldn't be an issue unless they gave Max another nitrogen cooled <laughs> uh, camera, as they are so often want to. Yeah, do. they probably do. They're yeah. like, you know, Max is going to test it, so let's make sure we get the yeah. one camera that does well. Uh, I actually went up to him and I was like, Max, you always do the overheat test tonight. Let me do the overheat test. You have fun. And he was like, Oh no, I did I the overheat did test late last night. So <laughs> you, you can't stop the guy. Uh, but he was also very impressed with the video autofocus on this. Uh, says it's the best he's seen on the Sony system. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and compared to a D850s and stuff, I mean, oh, yeah. It's, I mean, yeah. it's the A9 system. The hit rate is incredibly high. The eye autofocus is the greatest thing of all time shooting people. Yeah. You'll never have miscalibration and lens alignment issues. Like, <sighs> Everyone who shoots events should go play with eye autofocus right now. You have no idea how useful yeah. it is. One of the thoughts amongst the press, like just one of the overarching thoughts amongst the press was that Canon and Nikon would be very, very scared at this point. Yeah. And I think um, that's legitimate. Um, so just to set another nail in the coffin, skin tones are good? Or? They're okay. Yeah. I mean, I'd if put any, the middle of the pack as opposed to bottom of the pack, which is what I used to say. I, I mean, still like Canon than, and Nikon skin tones better. Better than Pentax, that's for sure. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> I like Panasonic skin tones better, too. So I'd put Sony fairly down the pack, but from a photographic standpoint, it's it's easy to correct. And it really comes down to your raw software, too. Open yeah. these up with Capture, Capture One. Capture One does a great job. You'll find that tint issue is largely resolved, because um, I yeah. use Sony for, all, for my family pictures for the longest time. Switching to Capture One made a huge difference yeah. in the amount of time I spent. Lightroom, you might want to make a, yeah, a profile just but to even for it automatically. Yeah, but even then, you don't know if it's going to skew green or magenta. It's tough yeah. to predict, so it's tough to apply a regular um, profile to it. So, yeah, we could say color science is down at the bottom of the pack. Yeah. Okay. But it's still so super usable. All right. Well, Not uh, for JPEG shooters. Is the A9 stack sensor going to outstep the A7... Mark three sensor not Mark. shooting video. <laughs> um, not 4K, let's just say 1080. Yeah, I haven't let's looked at see. it quite as much because of some of the limitations yeah, yeah, with yeah. picture profile. I will say it was a less noticeable in high ISO shift between yeah. Super 35 and full frame, but I would put them almost on I'd par. say this is a better choice than the A9 as a video camera. Yeah, just having those picture profiles there and yeah. for it being... A third of the price? Yeah, it was kind of silly that they, again, that's what we talked about. You know, the A9, they, they kind of handicapped the, the video capabilities. And, yeah, maybe they were like, oh, we better not do that again. That didn't yeah. go well. So, yeah, maybe they're like, okay, A7 III is going to get it. So, yeah, yeah easy uh, choice. I'd go A7 III. A, A7R3's viewfinder versus the A7 
threes mm -hmm. viewfinder. Yeah. A7R is better. Noticeably, noticeably better. better. Yeah. It's I, another 1.2 megapixels better uh, in the EVF, and the screen is better too. But I will say that for still photography, it really didn't make that big a difference. No, and I wouldn't have noticed it too much. It's if you're shooting video, I think there's a threshold with that 3.6 million dot EVF where. I'm very comfortable with yeah. my own vision, pulling focus without punching in. It's changed the way we shoot the show quite a bit. I was, you could say certainly, you'd be like, are you ready? Are you ready? And I'm like, no, I'm punching in to check the focus on this thing. Uh, so it did slow me down. I would, if I was shooting with the a7 III, I'd want a monitor on it, there you uh, go. straight up. Yep. So it is noticeable. For photography, I just feel like, you know, this is still 2017 technology, 2016 technology, it's not bad at all. I know when I got back to my GH5 at the end of the trip, as soon as I looked through that viewfinder, it was a breath of yeah. fresh air again. I mean, the back screen was tough to see, but I mean, we're talking like desert sun, so yeah. and it can't it's be great. too hard on it. It doesn't dim when you're doing 4K and no. high speed recording no, no. like the 63, 6500 do. Yeah. Is there a better street... <laughs> Is there a better street camera other than the A7R Mark III? A better street camera, yeah. like amongst all the cameras on the planet? Yeah, sure. <laughs> I mean, it's a, if you're a street shooter, you want a sexy you, camera, you're so the X-T2 is still Yeah, there. these aren't pretty. The xha one's not going to impress anybody on the street because it's too techy looking. So go. I guess X100F was still going to be the king of it, yep. unfortunately. Like an M10, obviously. Yeah, there you go. There you go. Yeah. There you go. Uh, but I mean, an A7 III on the street would be great. It would be a, it would be a great street camera. I do think in a lot of situations that electronic shutter would be usable for some street photography. Oh, I don't know. I don't. Yeah, I, I'd still go APS-C. Honestly, I think APS-C cameras for street are better. Yeah, smaller lenses. Yeah, less noticeable. And let's remember too, Sony full frame glass is some of the most expensive out there. That's why we're seeing a lot of people using adapters on yeah. them because if you want to go all native. Um, sure. Consistently, the price of switching is more if you want to go all native lenses unless compared you to do, Nikon yeah. or Canon. Unless you do, you know, the 28 f2, the 51.8, and you know, the 85.18. You could do that, and they're great lenses. Yes. But yeah, you're right. Beyond that, your affordable choices, and and the the curve is huge. It's like affordable, and then. Yeah. On that topic, let's talk about the Sigmas quickly because yes. Yes, they please, are affordable, beautiful lenses. I mean, we consider it probably the best lens lineup out there, cost to performance, right? Yes, Would I in, in a lot of ways, sure. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so I, they took a long time coming out with E-mount, and I was like, oh, this is awesome. They are going to redesign the optics for this, keep them small, especially with wide angles. You can really change the lens design, make it better potentially with mm -hmm. mirrorless cameras, and keep everything small and light. And what they spent those years doing was building a hollow tube on the back of now. their other DSLR optimized lenses, which I think is disappointing, but it keeps the we price We don't down. know okay. that for sure. Okay, I mean, we don't know that for sure. They were under glass and all that kind of stuff, but yeah, on it the back really of all of them, you saw the same distance as like a DSLR flange yeah. sitting at the back of them. It yeah. looks like you took a 50mm 1.4 art with an MC11 and just super glued the MC11 Put on Put some that. black gaff tape on the seam. And then sealed it with like, you know, JB Weld epoxy <laughs> and then painted it and then you're like done. So, but we don't know that for sure. We don't know that for sure. We still have to get our hands on an actual testing So please unit. don't hold us to okay. that. But this is what I suspect. But regardless, they look like they're larger than they need to be. Yeah. But okay. that's always been a Sigma thing. They're not going to balance Is great it? on this. Sigma achieves a lot of their great optical performance by oversizing. By oversizing. We know this because you can put some of that glass on medium format cameras yeah. and it still covers. It's the same thing that Zeiss does with their Otises. Yeah. yeah. Their Otai? Otisai? Ot ODI. Ot Odysseys? Odyssey. Otuses. Cool. Uh, yeah. Let's do a couple uh, more questions and I think we're almost ready to yeah, wrap up. Yeah, we're, we're, we're almost wrapped. But. Um, would you think that with the adapters or even these newer Sigma lenses for whenever they come out, uh, will we have compliance to eye focus or eye yes. focus? Yeah, yeah, yeah full support. Yeah. The Tamrons actually, for example, did quite well with our autofocusing tests, so eye autofocus and yeah. stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, it's now supported on the Metabones. It's supported yeah. on the Sigma MC11, um, and for the native lenses, absolutely, it's yeah. supported. We we can already see this because we've used Sigma's beautiful 16 mil and 30 mil crop lenses on the E mount cameras. Yeah. IAF works brilliantly on those. Yeah. Did you uh, get any nice insights or pull any nice insights from any of the engineers while you were there in Las Vegas? 
Less than usual this yeah. trip. Yeah. Um, not as many of the engineers this time. Um, and Rishi was talking to them the whole time. Yeah. Rishi's such an engineer hog. I well, love him. But... <laughs> and and let's, let's be honest, too. I mean, basically, other than the sensor, all the components on this camera are basically just components it's an amalgamation we already cameras. know from other cameras, right? I mean, very little is brand new. It's a battery that we already know to be excellent. It's the same body. It's the same screens in EVF, same processing units. So the only real change is the backside aluminum sensor uh, 24 megapixel and that was a minor upgrade yeah it, yeah um, <laughs> what Dean uh, my day's going good thanks <laughs> don't worry Dean we have time we'll yeah, change that you wouldn't know it from the tone yeah we'll, yeah, we'll break him having a great day today I have, I have a yeah. great voice I can mask all my broken emotions no emotion yes yeah. uh, emotion any other mask? questions there Ron uh, no we're no good there probably is questions give me a second yeah, Just right. keep on yammering. Okay. Don't be lazy. Don't be lazy. Um, we met Ted Forbes this trip. That was we a did. Treat. That was we've cool. Been, we've been talking back and forth with him for a while, so it was great to meet him in person. Now we got to meet a lot of new people. Um, yeah, it was a pretty wide net Sony cast. Ken Rockwell, we met uh, for the first time. Ted uh, Forbes. Yeah, <laughs> it was it was good. Amazing. No questions were, about Ken were, Rockwell. Were any of the other YouTubers at the event a holes? We have uh, no let's comment not. on that. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. Uh, Chris there, and Jordan there, were kind of yeah, dicks. Yeah. There is a diversity of personality types at these press events. <laughs> Should we talk about uh, Poland's podcast? Nope, nope. Okay, nope, never mind. Nope. Ignore, ignore Jared yeah. Poland's podcast. Yeah. You ignore mean, I, I can't quite remember that. The, well, the by name of the guy the with the fro. Yeah. It's, yeah. yeah, that guy that Steven films. Oh, yeah, Steven yeah. and that uh, that other guy. The guy with um, the hair, yeah. You know, the... Yeah. Uh, the it's all good. Fro guys. You're alleged, Jared. <laughs> uh, uh, okay. We got beef again. So, anyways, uh, how would you compare the optic viewfinder on the DA50 versus the A7 EVF? A7 Mark. I'm, A7 III. I mean, DA50's got one of the nicest optical viewfinders I've ever seen in my entire life, but it's still an A7, optical viewfinder. And the A7 III has a mid-range electronic sure. viewfinder, but I love having an electronic viewfinder. It's how yes. I'm used to shooting. I love having my histogram in front of me, punch-in magnifiers, all those great things. Yeah, EVFs have, have spoiled us, and I don't being think I ever to, really want to go back. Being able to review images in the field through the viewfinder, too, is a huge benefit. Did you notice if the 7.3 has S-Log and what's its native yes. ISO? Yeah. S-Log 2 and 3 with it. Um, again, I don't recommend S-Log 3 with 8-bit cameras, but S-Log 2 is natively 800 ISO. Mm -hmm. I shot a lot of high contrast stuff with that. Very nice clean shadows on it. Um, so it is largely usable dynamic range. They say 15 stops, which is madness. Yeah. But Can I would we say have a ceiling so of about, what, 200,000 ISO over 200,000 ISO? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, for stills. So, like, the starting point is 800, is 800 ISO. ISO. Oh, okay. Now, yeah. remember, that always sounds like a lot, but with S-Log2, you really want to overexpose it by yeah. a stop and a half to two yeah. stops. Right. So, um, you know, that's 200 ISO, which is a good starting point. And again, this sensor seems to be the classic ISO invariant sensor that they like to play with. So, yeah. Yeah, that's been yeah. our results. Again, we're waiting yeah. for Capture One support, but if you want to hang on to highlights in a high dynamic range shot, you know, low ISOs and crank that exposure up. Bring those shadows up. Yep. They'll, they'll magically appear as if out of nowhere. Yeah. <coughs> Remember, shooting with an ISO invariant sensor is no fun, but your results <laughs> will be great. So are we flashing? This is not a review on there? This is oh, not yeah. a review. One more time, and then I think we're one good. Yep. Yeah. Uh, so in as a parting thought, um, are we going to review the K1 Mark II? I don't know. I'm skeptical. Right. We there are we behind on reviews right now. We are halfway through a GH5S review. XH1 <laughs> review is on the way. GX9, LX200. I mean, if tell you what, if 200,000 people join our Instagram feeds, <laughs> subscribe to our channel, and specifically write message saying we need you to review the K12. Yes, we if will. If everyone review. on Pentex forums subscribes and berates us, we will review the K12. And they have to subscribe, and they have to join our Instagram, and then they have to apologize for all the mean things that they've said about us. These rules are harsh and unflinching. Yeah. And then yes, we will <laughs> happily do a review. Yeah. Uh, okay, I, we're we're getting a whack more questions. Do we have any time left? Yes. We have five minutes left. Well, right, let's do perfect. it. All let's right. do it. Lightning round. Give the people oh, what they want. Right. So, uh, Sorry, guys. I know it's getting guys, noisy in here. 
busy worst, today. Worst snowstorm do, ever, and everybody wants to buy a camera today. Did you guys do any telephoto shooting, i.e. kind of stuff that would mimic wildlife or anything? No, like not the 402.8. No. I know. Oh, everybody's okay. excited about the 402.8. Yeah. Uh, it is not out yet. You used the 1 to 400 for a little bit, He's 100 right? 400 for a bit. Buggy buggy yeah. Yeah. Now, I mean, that's a little... A dune buggy is a pretty easy thing to shoot. You know, you need about 10 feet of depth of field yeah. to shoot a dune buggy. It's, you know what? It's an A9 focusing system for all intents and purposes, so it'll be awesome. Yeah. And this I will know, be a great wildlife camera unless you want the high resolution sensor to Tony crop. and Chelsea are using an A9 for wildlife and sports a lot, and yeah. they've been really, really impressed with okay. it. Yeah. Next one. Uh, what's the highest ISO on the A7 III that you would use in video? I'd probably cap it at about 12.8 would be in full frame 12 8 uh, and then 6400 in yeah it still uh, retains good sharpness sharp. yeah. yeah yeah if you don't need that resolution or you're willing to downsample to 1080 push it another stop 25 6 yeah yeah um, see sure. nobody cares about photography S spoil us next unsung camera next which Ooh. next unsung camera uh, oh, we got some fun ones. Yeah, we have that interesting little can, and yeah. we're not going to spoil it. No, I don't want to spoil it. No, but, we don't uh, like to spoil it. Um, It'll be fun. We have so many current cameras to review first, but I yeah. really want to do it. It's going to be a fun one. Yeah. Do you really value Tony's opinion? Yes. Absolutely, we do. Yeah. And Chelsea's. Yeah. Haha, <laughs> <laughs> take that. Yeah. <laughs> Here it is. Uh, well, why would they just ask about Tony? Yeah, I know. I don't know. It's just in Chelsea there. knows her stuff, and she's funnier. <laughs> We love you, too. Well, I think Tony would be the first Shots person on the Tony. planet to agree that his wife is a funny person. Yeah, Tony's a funny guy, too, but uh, Chelsea makes me giggle. A6500 versus A7 Mark III's EVF. Oh, very similar. Yeah, very uh, similar. A little higher magnification on the A7 III. So yeah. A7 III is a point seven eight, just yeah. like the A7 R2. Yeah. Best and worst thing. No. Why? I think I best, say R like, it, like I'm from Newfoundland. Best thing about the A7 Mark III. Flash this is not review while they're answering. Best thing about the A7 III? Value for the dollar, by far. Yeah, just uh, lack yeah. of handicapping. Yeah. Focus joystick, killer battery, dual Everything card right. slots, yep. all the stuff I thought they'd scale back. No they handicapping. Didn't. Worst yeah. thing about it? Jordan hates the viewfinder and Chris doesn't, and so we're going to have an argument later. That's the worst part about it. Yeah. Worst part about it, you won't be able to get it for a month. Honestly, there I can't think of anything negative about this camera. Yeah. When you look at the price point, what they did, and the fact that they really didn't market segment very much, you're like, yeah, this is nice. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Sony, for making a really nice camera. Not Great for price JPEG point. shooters, but other than that, it casts a pretty wide net. Did you guys use an external monitor while recording any video on the A7 Mark III? Heck no! I, I did not. I watched everybody else film with an external monitor and envied the dickens out now, of them. Now, did it black out their screen? Uh, ooh. I ah, didn't, didn't catch okay. that. People yeah. don't care about photography, so I can't answer that question. Okay. Uh, you know what? We'll take a look at that. Thank you for the question I missed. Or actually, Max Yuryev, can you just take care of that <laughs> for me? Thanks, Max. Next question. Uh, Jordan, where'd you get that sweater? Uh, this was a gift, I believe, from my mother-in-law. I like this sweater. I don't see why the internet... Can Dark blue's nice color. It's do, warm. Do, do you believe it's cold outside. that the new battery will appear in an APS-C camera? I really hope so. Yeah, I hope I so. I think they're going to move that across the entire line. It will make the grip larger. Yeah. Yeah, but it's physically a much larger yeah. battery. It's going to change the camera design. Uh, comment is, worst thing, no floppy screen. Yeah, Maybe you're right. Agreed. Yeah. Yeah, I want Absolutely. a fully articulating screen yeah. ASAP. All right. Is that it? We. Have I think we did really good today, yes, Chris. Yes, I think we did too. Yeah. yeah. All right. Other so, than nobody cares about photography. Uh, no, people care, Chris. It's right. just that there's a billion other things guts. that are publishing all the photographic features. Not many people are emphasizing the video side, so that's why people huh? are curious. Photography's right? dead. Two years. Nope. <laughs> okay. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> wow. Ring You'll in, see. Ring in the death bell. You'll see. Yeah. Magazines and photography will die at the same time. Huh? <laughs> I love you all. Oh, wow. Yeah. Have a great night. <laughs> Have a great weekend, yep. guys. Yeah. And I'm going on vacation. I'll see you all shortly. Thanks if you're in Calgary, stay in. home. What's wrong yeah. with you? It's a crazy, insane snowstorm out there. Yeah. Again. Oh, Again. actually, really quickly, oh. we have an in-store scanning demonstration today. <coughs> so oh, yeah. you just told them not to drive. Definitely yeah, no, come out. Chris, tell them to come in. Uh, and this is actually 
Yeah, a really nice. And it's really setup. cool. We're gonna yeah. have a hands-on one later. If you come today, check this out and buy a ticket for that. You get a twenty-dollar gift card. It is really pretty fascinating. Yeah. So just to clarify, because I don't know if that got across very well, in-store demo right now from ten till two o'clock, and we're talking about scanning negatives with DSLRs, the setup, the or quality, cameras, the yeah. post. It's awesome uh, as a demo, and then there's a workshop coming up later in March, and it's gonna be fantastic. Yep. Check out details all at thecamerastore.com. Right. I love you all. Flatbed Bye. scanners Bye. dead. Two years with magazines and <laughs> photography. <Yeah. laughs> Kisses. Take that. Yeah. Thanks, everyone.